Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at robinhallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin. On today's episode, Mary Oliver wrote, What will you do with your one wild and precious life? That question before you is so powerful. How are we choosing to use our one wild and precious life? This is an important conversation today. I'm so glad you're with me. Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. Well, hello, hello, hello. It's me, Robin. Welcome back to the podcast Tea with Robin This is episode 151, 151. And friends, you'll find the links, references, books, uh, awesome sauce I share here in the show notes. Look in the episode description where you're listening now or visit my website, robinhallett.com slash 151. So hi. Hi, beautiful. Hello. How are you? Always, I hope that you're being kind and gentle with yourself, honoring what you love, honoring what you need, remembering your spirit, you know, doing your do. And I hope it's a fun do, not just do, do, (laughs) do. Okay, seriously, though, I want to start off with the beautiful cheers today. I have some coffee with me. It's still in my thermos. I was out in the garden this morning, tending to the weeds, tending to, it's not quite fall yet, but things in transition, things in the process of change. The garden is so inspiring like that. If you're quiet, settled, and present, you will learn so many things from your higher self to your personality self. It's kind of cool. While I was out there today, I had been thinking about how I would really love to take a beautiful photo of a cicada. And so they're going to be leaving. And by leaving, I'm saying they die, they get eaten, whatever happens. They have made their laid their eggs for next year or whatever we want to call that. I can't get too into it because I start to creep myself out. But I did say this morning, I'd love to take a picture, see one up close and take a picture, get close because uh, something about where I'm at right now and my own journey, I want to make peace with things I used to not be able to handle, you know, on so many levels. Bugs, it's just one example. I pushed my cushion forward that I garden on my kneeler (laughs) and I heard the of the cicada and I didn't flinch and I didn't squeal normally I squeal (laughs) oh god number one are you there actually one morning magic we had a wasp in the room and it wasn't just a wasp interestingly it was a killer cicada wasp happened on the scene while I was live on Instagram, and it all got filmed, the squeal, the scream, number one. I've mentioned it here a few times, but some of you still talk to me who were there, still talk to me about it. (laughs) There's definitely a replay. I'll find it. But um, killer cicada wasp, you know, the cicadas, I've been afraid of them. And so, yeah, he buzzed or she buzzed, I don't know. And I was like, hello. So I'm trying to get a photo, looking at it, thinking about, don't just take the picture, woman, experience it for yourself. You know how this goes, right? So I said, I want to, if I could just get, you know, closer. And it's like she started walking up a blade of grass so I could take her picture. And then she got to the top and she fell over on her back and it was the most, (laughs) the the grass could not hold her. Um, Have you seen a cicada? That's going to be the image for this episode. So look for that. (laughs) She fell over on her back. 
So I picked her up. It was the most natural thing. And we hung out for a while. And I got to say, it's like my favorite color scheme. Her beautiful body is my favorite color scheme. And even her design. I'm so drawn to that design. She rested for a while. I wondered if I gave her a bit of respite on my hand there. I had I happened to have a green gardening glove on, so I wondered, you know, if that had anything to do with it. So she rested for about a minute, and then she took off, and I could feel the weight lift off my finger. They're very dense. So amazing miracles. So I've got a... <laughs> How many minutes ago did I say, let's cheers? Never miss a good opportunity to tell a cicada story when it comes, right? <laughs> okay. I've got a cup of coffee from the thermos from the garden. And it is, I put some sugar in there today. And some heavy whipping cream and sea salt um, and some cinnamon. And I want to say special cheers to a friend of ours in the Love Posse who made her transition this week, September 14th to be exact, um, Carrie Awesome Groat, <laughs> K-A-G. I want to say cheers to her and to all of us in our various transitions, honoring to the fullest what is here for us now and what we're truly knowing to do. Cheers. And you can learn more about Carrie and you can read her own message that she wrote um, before she passed, before she made her transition you can go to the show notes and you'll see a link for Carrie. You'll see. Yeah. So, you you know, if you want to know more. But the deepest thing is a friend of ours in this posse who's traveled with us. Um, even if you didn't know her, you traveled with me. I travel with you. And she traveled with me. And I traveled with her. You know, and we worked together in session every Friday um, as part of her, especially as part of her transition, preparing for her transition face to face. I mean, on Zoom. Hi, pandemic. Um, working on her being ready to go to make the next leap. And that was the biggest gift for me. I mean, I have been with plenty of people as they've passed, as they've uh, <laughs> opened the portal, as they've died, as they've made their way, as they've gone on to the great beyond. And this was my most profound because this is a relationship I have had um, since probably 2014. And some of you have had because you, you know, you have been with me. Some of you email me um, in response to the Love Posse happy mail I send. You know, I know who you are, <laughs> for sure. But also, I like to see how did we meet or when did we meet, and I'll click your email. And if you're still the same name and email, once in a while, it'll tell me, like, your first email to me was 2011, you know, or 2009, 2009, or 2006, you know? Some of us, we just met, and that was supposed to be, so... You know, this isn't any kind of contest, but Carrie and I somewhere around 2014, and we've been walking together ever since. I have her permission. She has asked me to talk about her learning. So it has been an amazing time, which continues if you let it, if you're willing and open to let it continue to be 
transformation and growth and also receiving. You know, you're not always supposed to be struggling to change. That's not at all what I'm trying to say here. Acceptance is very powerful. And it's what I talk about when we need to slow down, when we need to go, shh, when we need to stop flitting about because we're not receiving, we're not accepting what is. And that's something amazing that Carrie and I learned to do together to openly say the words. You are dying. You are leaving. We had opportunity to say, I have FOMO, (laughs) fear of missing out. And sometimes it wasn't Carrie who said that. Get it? Yeah. Being alive in life is hard. Doing your work is hard. You know, chewing on your productive experiences for your spiritual growth can be really, really difficult. And sometimes it can feel super pointless and super, what are we even doing here? I can't stand this, you know? Think about something that it, what came up for you just now? That's really all that matters, not what I'm saying. Just go to your own library of (laughs) stuff. One of the most amazing things I got to work on with Carrie, and I mean, like, this is something I received. This is something she taught me. When you think about that thing in your own life that you're going through all the time, and you may notice these places in you, how when you're upset, when you're worried, when you're afraid, maybe you've had a near, a close call, you know, with a health scare, whatever, or you've lost people around you have made their transition. Um, You're not always able to do the work of this is my one wild and precious life. Let me go with wild abandon and have a blast today. It never seems to go like that. You know, we struggle, we suffer, we churn. Sometimes it's just really hard. Like, and I witnessed that with with Carrie so many times that it's almost surprising that even the awareness of your death is not helping you over the hurdle alone of your struggles and wobbles. I would say, she would say, even even now, I'm still pissed about X, Y, and Z. I'm still mad at you know who. Um, Like there's this unconscious expectation that this this thing that's happening to me is going to change everything. It's, it blows me away. And also it did change everything, you know, but um, all the problems you have in your life every single day, the stories you carry, they're yours. So of course, they're going to be with you wherever you go. Did Joseph Campbell say that wherever you go, there you are? Well, yeah, on your deathbed, there you are too. So it's, it's kind of profound when you think about there really is no place other than your presence where you can be at peace unless you come into your heart and really get present and accept what is right whoa it still astounds me i'm still saying it to you now i'm astounded like even that your suffering is there and I, I remember this too, when number one was going through his cancer um, treatments those couple of years, like 
there's this part of us expecting how we should be like this should magically transport us to a new plane with our awareness and like suddenly it's all wonderful and easy and because this awareness has made us different and it has made us different and hi it's still us and we still need to do our journey you know we're still clinging to the small self we're still clinging to the small stuff we're still working on it and I don't know that's something in this moment like I just I really really hope it resonates for you because it's still blowing my mind even now yeah you know wow even now (laughs) you're consumed with like whatever you're consumed with your mind is just going to town it is you know do you know do you get it she'd be the first person to ask you instead of thinking about me she would say think about yourself What is it you can't seem to forgive, let go of? How are you blocking the light that is trying to come to you, but already here? You know, the only reason light comes to you is because it wants to meet itself in joy, you know, and have that explosion of joy, that burst of here we are. We're alive. It's now. This is beautiful. I'm free. You're free. But she would ask you, don't just um, think about me. Think, she would say, think about you. And where are you still spinning your story of lack and missing out and it not being right? Here come the cicadas. It's beautiful. So I was asking you, you know, what is it that you still don't appreciate and receive and um, allow? Gosh, sometimes I feel, even in our deepest hearts, the knowing is there for you. This thing I'm asking you about, what isn't enough? What aren't you measuring up still about? What are you still upset about? What are you still worried about? Um, what is not enough? What are you, What can you not accept, you know? I told you last week, I need to put this story down about the podcast, remember? So what are you needing to put down? Some of you, you really need to put it down, this story. Like retire, allow it to transform. A friend was reminding me in her session today how how much it helps her to point the finger out. Like I say, hey, put your finger out. Hey, stop it. Knock it off. Hey. And for me, how I started to transform the podcast story (laughs) is just to do that this week, this whole week, last week, because it really has been sinking in. And that is another blessing when friends die people die in your life, you take this stock like this is bullshit. This thing I keep doing to myself over and over and over. This thing I keep refusing to see, um, whatever it is for you. I mean, you know, you make the choice to set it down, put it down, let it go. Stop telling the story. Stop it. Stop it. Personally, I'm done with that story. And actually, it was very quick. It's still trying to assert itself quite a bit. And um, that's probably because something new wants to evolve with things, you know. It's probably not because I'm a loser and terrible at podcasting, right? 
I, I actually don't believe that, but that's the story that tries to assert itself. Um, what else would I like to do with this podcast? Maybe I want to evolve it. Maybe I want to do something more. I'll never be able to explore my heart's joy, what I would love, what I would be feeling free and excited to do if I keep telling the story, the old story, the sad, scared, afraid story. If I keep dredging up the dirt at some point, if you have a repetitive, cyclical, like never ending story with work, with family, with friends, I don't know, you know your deal. And if you get quiet for a moment, you know what it is. Most people, even when they tell me they don't know, you know, they know why they're suffering. They know the story that's creating their suffering. They, they do know. You do know. This is our wild and precious life. I love that. Our one wild and precious life in this lifetime anyway. <laughs> what are we going to be done with? What kinds of things do you want to be done with? I, I don't remember which episode back it was where I was talking about. I just was trying to make friends with people who weren't into me, couldn't celebrate me. And believe me, I participated in that. There is, as far as I can see, you know, I allow myself into those situations just as much as the other people. So, I mean, I'm not interested in playing the victim here or feeling sorry for myself. I just don't want to suffer. I just don't want to be so attached to my upset. You know? What about you? So I was talking to a friend the other day and I we were laughing because sometimes you feel so alone and so scared and so scared that you're so alone. I know a lot of you know this. You know, you've gone through surprising split ups, people you thought would be there for you who didn't sh couldn't show up, didn't show up the way you wanted friends who continue to not ask you how you are, how you're doing, you know, you experience in your own way this aloneness. I really know this place. I can feel alone as well. And especially alone in the way like being somebody who supports other people or shares things um, online, does this podcast I can feel very alone. And I'll tell you what, that can be a trick of my personality self, the loneliness who wants to support a very old story about people don't appreciate, they take advantage of, they're not there for, they don't see, you know, you only need to look at your early, early wounding and ask, where did I pick up some of these stories, some of these jaded stories? And in my case, because I know this is a touchy, tender place, I am not going to talk to you about you here. Because <laughs> um, I don't want those letters. Um, but also, I feel like we all have to come to this on our own. We do. I in my case, I really see how because I chose to be in the loneliness, in the woundedness, in the nobody gets me, nobody loves me, I'm a loser, you know, people take advantage of me, they're never there for me. I own fully, in this moment anyway, I own how I participated in that dance of pushing people away too, criticizing them holding them out, holding them at arm's length, you know? So it's never a one-sided clap here. <laughs> As I sometimes say, you know, if we are deeply, deeply lonely, instead of fighting the urge 
to um, be otherwise or to deny it or to just busy yourself so much that you're too frenetic to even feel any of this. You know, we want to do the work around it. And that's something, the loneliness, the aloneness, the onlyness, the otherness that we can feel deep in our hearts. Um, we want to keep holding hands with that place in us. Otherwise, at every stage and every age, you'll have another new reason why it's true. Think about that. At every age, at every stage, you'll have a new reason why that story is true. <laughs> Blown my own mind. This is your wild and precious life. You're one in this lifetime anyway. Wild and precious life. It's time. What are we holding back for? What old story are we still supporting and nourishing? Nurturing, tending, protecting. It's time. It's time. Personally, I just feel that love accountability. A friend has passed, has made her transition. And I'm using that as inspiration. You know, it's okay to play with your words, friends. You know, there's no, <laughs> there's no one right way to talk about death. You know, I really appreciate our community and appreciate what this time together does for both of us and all of us. My heart to your heart, your heart to many hearts, our hearts to many more hearts. It's amazing. I'm really receiving that because of this time. I'm so glad I'm, my eyes are open. My heart is open to this time and I'm getting it. The gift of community is something I'm really beginning to receive here for myself. That something I, of a legacy I'm creating is the gift of community. It's, it's no small thing that you meet people online who are you are meant to meet. The Course in Miracles talks about this all the time, that there are there is a core group. I call us the love posse. There is a core group that is already looking for each other and meant to find each other and um, supposed to learn and teach together with each other. And so that's who we are as a posse, you know, meant to be, meant to be. That's us. I was talking to a friend I met online who I've hung out with in person and we continue to hang out and talk on the phone. And we were talking about all the gifts we're receiving in this time and what we're, what do we know now that we've experienced this passing, this transformation, this transition, how are we going to take it into our own lives and allow the medicine to heal what needs healing and to allow the transformational energy to you know, the same way I held that cicada in my hand and it had a rest. It was burrowed way down deep in the grass and I lifted it up and it had a rest on my, on my palm or on my finger. And then it took off after a few, you know, probably a minute. It took off. That's what taking this time, instead of just being down in the dumps and sad and destroyed about whatever's going on in your life, and chewing it and chewing it and chewing it. Anybody eat a tough piece of meat? Some people, you know, they arrive in all kinds of situations in their life that are offering transformation to them and they're busy chewing their old stale piece of meat <laughs> that has no flavor, you know. But the beauty is we all have timing. It, it will come for us. There is no expiration on the amount of time you have. Um, if you believe in the eternal nature of your light, there's no expiration limit. So no worries there. Um, but Patty said to me, it's like we're in the Garden of Eden right now. We are there right now. 
but we're talking about chopping down trees and building houses. <laughs> How deep that was. Did you hear that episode? Holy shift. I said to her, holy shift. <laughs> she blew my mind. It's like we're in the Garden of Eden. You know, we are in the Garden of Eden. This now moment is as perfect as it will ever be. The opportunities, the abundance, the, the life force energy, the joy, it's all perfect right now. Don't be that one who is talking about how you need to get about chopping down trees so you can put houses in. And just, you know, somehow justify your experience, just make the money to justify your experience, make the name for yourself to justify your experience. I mean, sit with that. It will blow your mind. And hopefully your heart right open, hopefully your heart, your mind, everything. We have so many difficult things that we experience and we walk through. And, but we've also got the ability, the light, the love, the ability to see it new, see it anew. Let all things be exactly as they are. It means you are the light. You are the light. And this moment is perfect and everything you need is here. All that you need to support your current evolution is happening. Trust the strength of the soul. To carry you through these places where you're shooting yourself, you're worrying about it, you're worrying about things dying or yourself dying. You know, what is it specifically that you're worried about most of the time? Can we trust the strength of our soul to carry us? And can you trust? in the help that will come to you in the form of messages and music and art and stories that people share with you, cicadas that land to wow your world. Can you trust that the help will come to show you again and again that you're living in Eden, only dreaming of chopping down trees to build houses? This time of transition, it is big, big, big. And my prayer is you make the time to check in with your own. Do it different. Change it up. Experiment. And most of all, remember community. Many of us have never met in person and are still so rocked by things that happen in the posse, right? Own that. Claim it. You know, it's like claiming the kingdom. Claim it for yourself. You are a part of this. How did Glenn Fry sing it? You're a part of me. I'm a part of you. Before I go, I thought I would read a poem to you, speak a poem to you. You know, in so many of my conversations with Carrie, she would say to me, I feel like I didn't do my life right. I'm still feeling sad that I didn't make anything of myself before I die. And over and over, you know, I marveled at how, yes, yes, you did. Yes, you do. Yes, you have. But so often, the mystery is your own about how that works. It's your own to be in the mystery 
of how your very presence is powerful and moving. How your very way is a healer for others. How your very choice to awaken and be present in your journey is what you're meant to be doing with your life, but also so, so powerful for other people. You know, if we can't see that, it is just hard. Stay in the mystery with what you're doing. Try not to be so definitive about your surety of your suckitude. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let me read this poem. Where did you go? Here it is. The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? When she says, tell me, what else should I have done? You know, the ego is always telling you, you need to be doing something else, different, better, faster. It's up to you to know who that is speaking. You need to know who you're speaking to. That's your practice. So, yeah. So all my thoughts today, share this episode with anyone who could use it. Anyone you want to bring in a little closer into your life and I'll be back next week to share in this love again with you remember to check the show notes you can explore a little more and probably listen to uh, Glenn Fry sing the song I don't know maybe just a skosh better than me (laughs) (laughs) you're a part of me I'm a part of you, wherever we may travel, whatever we go through, whatever time may take away, it cannot change the way we feel today. (laughs) So hold me close and say you feel it too. Do you feel it? Huh? You're a part of me, and I'm a part of you. It's me, Robin, your friend and heart sparkler. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Life is very short, let's make the very most of it. You are a precious gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. We are here to shine and shine bright. You are a gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. 
life is precious and you are a spark of the divine so shine like you know it rock it like you mean it cause you really really mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it don't let crispy people tell you that you aren't sparkly cause you are cause you are because you are. Thank you. I like that. I love it, honey. Thank you. Give me a kiss.